Hello, welcome to the Friday, May 15th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Now, when we are talking about Windows patches, and as we did this Tuesday, we always focus on what Microsoft calls its critical vulnerabilities. Rob today in his diary actually picked up on one of the medium vulnerabilities to kind of show that you probably shouldn't neglect them. The vulnerability here was CVE 2020-1048. Now, this vulnerability has a rating of a medium and it's a pretty much escalation in the printer spooler. However, it turns out to be actually a fairly simple persistent back door. All you have to do is add a new printer port that points to the famous UAL API.dll and then essentially anything that you send, any binary that you send to this printer port will be executed. Now, admittedly, CVSS score of this vulnerability is 7.8, which isn't exactly low, but you definitely shouldn't really miss out on some of these lower vulnerabilities. Luckily, these days, most people just apply the full set of patches, so there isn't really any cherry picking that usually happens that may overlook an issue like this. And the US CERT published a list of what they're calling the top 10 most exploited vulnerabilities from 2016 to 2019. And well, it yet again shows how important it is to patch Windows and Office. Many of the vulnerabilities are Office vulnerabilities and they're not the recent ones. They're going back like to 2017, even 2012. So these vulnerabilities are still causing a lot of pain for organizations. Now, aside from Office, we also have SharePoint vulnerabilities here, Adobe Flash, of course, and then the famous Apache Struts vulnerability that, of course, caused quite a bit of pain to large companies. Now, for 2020, which, of course, is still a new year cert list, two vulnerabilities. One is the Pulse Connect Secure vulnerability that I mentioned uh, before a number of times, as well as, of course, Citrix ADC, which kept us busy around New Year's. In addition, they also mention Microsoft Office 365 security configuration issues. We are seeing an awful lot of phishing, of course, happening there. And then a more general organizational cybersecurity weakness where basically you just don't bother with patching and configuring, which really summarizes why we have all these old vulnerabilities still sort of being at the top of the list. And Serodium, a company that uh, sort of uh, made a name for itself by paying rather high bounties for vulnerabilities being reported to it. Today, caused some stir with a tweet stating that, well, uh, they're not really interested in any Apple iOS and Safari exploits anymore because they have too many of them. So it appears that there is a large number of unpatched iOS vulnerabilities that is being traded uh, within closed circles that Apple at this point has not patched yet. Of course, there is no sort of third party or independent verification of this because Serodium doesn't make these vulnerabilities public. But then again, they're kind of making a living of buying and selling these exploits. So them not buying certainly means that the market is somewhat saturated for this type of exploit. And this certainly doesn't look good for Apple. Now, Apple has a pretty good reputation when it comes to, for example, managing access to its stores, but its basic software operating systems and such always have suffered from kind of not really having the size of a security team that a company like Apple probably needs to have something similar to, for example, Google's project Serum. And Big IP announced a vulnerability, actually a couple of vulnerabilities in its Big IP Edge client. This is software that you would install on systems that essentially connect back to a Big IP VPN, 
Well, bad part, there is no patch at this point, so it's something that you should be watching and uh, apply the patch as soon as F5 comes out with it. Haven't really seen any sort of details about when a patch is expected. Well, that's it for today. Just a reminder, we have all of these little teasers for our handler talks at Sans Fire. Also, the schedule for the handler's talks has been made live now. So I'll add a link to the show notes again. Also on the Storm Center sort of upper right hand corner, you'll see a link to the teaser videos. Uh, today, I just made the one video with Rob live. Rob is the one that was today handler on duty and wrote the blog post about the uh, windows vulnerability as well as the second one about how to sort of write little gui applications in powershell that's it for today thanks again for listening and talk to you again on monday bye